Well, my family had a family-owned business. I was born and raised in a business in a playpen. My parents opened up a place called Big Jim's and Sons Barbecue. Um, they would take me to the restaurant and I would have to be there during the day because it was too expensive to have a baby keeper, a, a babysitter. Growing up, I thought it was a good way to be your own boss, to have more control over what you're doing and how you're achieving your income. You know, having that control gives you that flexibility of your time and your money. I married twice. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania originally. There was a sense of entrepreneurship in the community because everybody was a vendor. You will walk down the street in certain areas, certain business districts. The smaller person had a vending table, whether they were selling socks, hats, you know, anything, they had an opportunity to, to sell and do it legally, you know, they would do it as a, as a vendor. You know, that was a great opportunity, and me seeing that growth and, and trying to take advantage of those opportunities to sell things, to promote things, I did that at an early age. And at an early age, I started businesses. You know, I started just as a commission business. For the Philadelphia uh, Bulletin, that was one job. Avon, that was two. I've also driven Yellow Cab as a commission driver. And I um, started as a general contractor, and then I bought my first piece of property. I've had a nail salon. Since I've been here, we established uh, top stakes and hoagies. It had ran for five years before COVID came in. My first building was built in 2010 at 1536 North Fairmount. We've sold it um, two years ago. Um, we have properties down at 9th Street, 9th and Madison. Um, we're planning to do some affordable housing in that area. I own a majority of vacant lots there. So we're planning to do um, some affordable housing, but in this climate, I ask myself, I, I ask myself constantly, how can we do affordable housing when the building materials, you know, has went up triple? You know, unless we get some subsidies or the pricing come down of building goods it would be impossible to do affordable housing. But my biggest project as it is today at 26 and Hillside, we're building four duplexes and one triplex. That'll give us a total of 11 units on one property at one time. That's a major accomplishment for, for me in this arena. I have put together a multi-million dollar project at 17th and Hillside that will be partnering with WSU that the current president has endorsed. I initially started my businesses by myself because I couldn't trust individuals as partners. But now moving into the multi-million dollar arena, you gotta find some trust in some people and some security there because you, you can't you, you can't do it alone. You know, it, it looks better if you have a, at least a couple partners. We have uh, Medical Innovative Solutions as a business that my wife and I started. She is an OBGYN physician for over 22 years. So I encourage her to, to own more of what you do. I mean, it's okay to be a part of a rental market, but to see more of your money, you need to own the space that you, that you're one to occupy your business in and not to rent that. Here in Wichita, there were a lot of space available, a lot of vacant lots, a lot of vacant property. So I said, well, I can take my business to another level and do new construction. So upon doing that, making some investments, I saw a need to open a restaurant. Well, it became simple to me because I spent my first 20 years of existence as a kid in a restaurant business that was ran and owned by my mother and father. So I took that knowledge to open up my own restaurant because we were in a strip mall up here, 21st and Grove, 
and it never had been an eating establishment in that. You know, and I knew the gentleman that owned that. We worked on an agreement that we would establish a restaurant there. The restaurant was named Top Steaks and Hoagies. So I figured I'll be bringing that Philadelphia taste of the original Philadelphia cheesesteaks to Wichita, Kansas, where it was nothing like that here. But I'm bringing an original sandwich, an original flavor and taste of what I grew up on here to Wichita. I'm a founder of Heartland Black Chamber of Commerce, and I was trying to spread that entrepreneurship opportunity out to people within the community. Now I see that there are more people going into businesses post-COVID-19. But whatever you want to do, whoever you want to be, uh, how successful you want to be, put it a part of a vision board and then check them off as you achieve those goals. Do not open a business that you cannot work yourself. Do not depend on employees to come to work, come to work on time, and in a proper manner. If I depended on somebody else to come to work, then my business wouldn't open some days. When I had the nail salon, I didn't need to have a manager's license to have a nail salon. It made me decide to go to school to Gordon Phillips to get my license so that I wouldn't become dependent on somebody else to work or run my business. So that would be the best advice I can give a person. Whereas though, you know, aside from my trade people, I pretty much can do everything in the building and the construction atmosphere. You know, I've been a labor foreman with 14 people under me. You know, all these things and working major highway construction, that's what helped me prepare for my business today. You know, but again, you know, don't become dependent on somebody else. Be able to do the business yourself in the absence of that individual.